Hello chess fans and today we're going to look at a game that I played online and it was a 25 minute game and if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded in a while I'll put it in the description. So it was a really high quality game and it was against an opponent rated pretty much the same as me. Currently I'm rated uh, 1943 in quick chess and my opponent was rated 1941 so a very close matchup and we both played uh, pretty well. So I start off with e4, c5, knight f3, e6, d4. So this is pretty natural. White breaks in the center. This is this is called either a Taimanov or a Khan. Takes takes. Uh, knight c6. So we went for the Taimanov, and here I play knight c3. You can also play knight b5 and knight xc6, and queen c7. So queen c7 is the main line, and here you have a lot of options. There's bishop e2, bishop e3, g3, f4. And knight ddb5 is a interesting, uh, uh, you get three pieces for the queen. But I went for bishop e3, which is the main line, and my opponent went for a6, which is, again, the main line. And here I didn't go for the main line because I don't really like the main line positions that much. After queen d2, I find that after uh, knight f6 and castle's queen side, uh, bishop b4 is kind of annoying. And this is the main line after f3, and I think they played, okay, they played knight e5 first and then d5 later. But instead I play bishop d3, and this has the idea of playing castles, f4, queen f3, rook e1, and expanding in the center. So my opponent played bishop e7, which is an um, inaccuracy, but we'll go back into theory in just a second. f4, d6, and I castles. So yeah, the engine says this is a mistake, but actually in two moves we're back in theory, knight f6. And yeah, after queen f3, we're back in theory at around 60-ish uh, games. And so here there are basically two moves. You can castle or bishop d7. And what I thought about this position is you can have this position against a knight orf, except your bishop will probably be on e2. So I thought this is basically an improved knight orf because you got your bishop to d3. And the knight, instead of being on d7 where it can go to c5 and can go to b6 to c4, it's on c6 where it's kind of misplaced. It can really only capture here. So I thought this was an improved position for me, and as theory shows, white has really high win rates here, and the engine likes white here too. So after castles, I played rook a1, the main move, getting my pieces into the game, and e5. So he breaks in the center. Now e5 is actually an inaccuracy, and during the game, I thought that if I place a knight on d4, that that should be really good. So if I do it now, obviously I lose a piece, because after takes, takes, he takes there. So what I had to do is I had to move this knight, and then I had to try to put this knight on d4. So... I'll give you a few seconds. What do you guys think is the best move for white? I'll give you a hint. It's moving this knight. Okay. So there are basically two best moves you can play in this position. Or three, actually. You can play knight d3, knight e2, or knight f5. And all of these are pretty good. The engine likes knight d e2 the best. But the move I played was none of these moves. And it is a minor inaccuracy. But it's hard to explain why. So after knight d e2... What I was afraid of is I was afraid of b4, and then he plays b5. I have to go back, and he'll try to go for a quick d5. And if I go knight d4, um, I'm not sure what I was afraid of, but I think I was afraid of the knight coming to b4 and putting pressure here. But I thought that if this pawn kicks me away and I have to move away or something, he'll play d5. So I was slightly afraid of this, so I played knight xc6. And the line I calculated was uh, queen xc6. Sorry for the lag. Knight d5 takes, takes. Yeah, okay, so my uh, computer is very laggy right now. That's why I haven't been able to do videos recently. And after queen c7 takes, takes, I thought that my bishops are great. I have a queen side majority. If I stop him from playing f5, I may be playing g4. I know that idea seems a little bit crazy, but. If I stop him from playing f5, there's basically no way to push his majority, and I'm going to play c4, c5, maybe d6. So I thought I was really much better in this position, but he played b takes here. A big surprise to me, because I thought after takes takes that I had just a winning position due to the fact that my bishop's going to go here on this great diagonal. This bishop might come to g5, put pressure here, and all my pieces are greatly placed, while half his pieces are not really developed. So here I thought I had a big advantage. And I actually challenge you guys to find the best move here for white because it is an extremely advanced move. And I played an inaccuracy that I think maybe 90% of players would play. And it is a really in uninstructive move, the best move. So I recommend you pause your video while I was talking. But 
the in here, here the best move is knight a4. So seemingly, okay, this move is going for b6 and c5. We can see that. But it doesn't really make so much sense, right? Because now your your opponent can put their bishop on e6. Knight b6 is not that big of a threat. And if they put their bishop on e6, let's say, we're not even going to play knight c5, right? So it's kind of strange. But the whole idea, actually, is not that the knight on a4 is that good. It's that the knight on c3 is completely misplaced. And that is a very advanced idea that I did not see. Because the bishop coming to b4 is a really big problem. These pawns are going to be under lots of fire. And what you would want to do is get the knight to c5 where it's just a monster. That's one idea. Or if he trades it, then to get the bishop there. But the main idea, I think, and the engine agrees with me, is to just get the knight off c3 because the knight on c3 is just doing absolutely nothing. It's hitting air. So I didn't see that. I played bishop c4, which I think makes a lot of sense in hindsight. But... but now that I know knight a4 to c5 was better, I would have probably played that. And so here, uh, I thought that bishop c4 stopped bishop e6, and it does. My opponent played rook b8, the best move. And again, here, I should have played knight a4, and I've already explained that idea. But you can no longer go to b6 because he's covering b6, but instead you can try to go to uh, c5. But here I played b3, and b3, it looks like a really bad move, but... Bishop b3, I thought he has a4, a5 ideas Some in some positions, not this particular position. He has c4, c5 because I have knight d5. But my opponent, I played b3 instead, and my opponent played queen a5. And up to this point, we've made really no mistakes. Just a small inaccuracy uh, bishop c4 and a small inaccuracy queen a5. So my, me and my opponent are playing very well. And again, I missed completely missed this knight a4 idea. This is a really good idea. But now I think it's slightly weaker. It's, it's slightly more focused on the idea that the knight on c3 is uh, misplaced. Because the dark squares are now very weak, so you have to try to cover them. So I played bishop g5 instead, putting pressure here. He can't play this because of a tactical sequence that I I uh, calculated after takes here, takes here. You have, like, um, you have, I think, here. And then you have check and then uh, rook f3. If you can calculate that on your head, good on you. But h6, bishop xf6, bishop fxf6, I think this makes sense. I apologize for the lag, but I wanted to get a video anyways. So bishop g5. And this is a move I actually missed because an important factor here is actually he's threatening this fork. And it seems like a fork in the middle of my position, but it's just a very like unobvious thing that I missed. And here again, I should play knight f4, cover the dark squares, and also protect this pawn. But instead I played knight e2, the second best move, stopping knight f4. And this pawn is off limits in case you're wondering because after it takes... I have takes here, threatening the bishop, and if he grabs more material, then I take here. If he grabs on c2, I take on f7, followed by queen e8, and I win the game. So after queen c5 check, he played, I played king h1, bishop queen e7, defending his bishop, rook d1. Here I played bishop e6, or here he played bishop e6, sorry. I took that bishop, because I kind of have to, because if I move my bishop back, then bishop c4 is a bad move. Takes, takes. And here I have to play knight g1, and then I have to go knight h3, knight f2 to d3, and then maybe to c5, or or uh, knight g1 to f2 to g3, or sorry, to f2 to d3 to b2 to c4. And that, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to calculate that. I could also do it like this, but just to avoid the trade, you have to do it like this, which is kind of ridiculous. Or you can go like this. But in both cases, I would have to do a lot of maneuvering. What made sense to me is to double on the file. He plays rook fd8. I play rook fd1. He takes. If I take with the queen, I actually just lose. See if you can calculate why. If I take with the queen, I just lose immediately. Yeah, if I take with the queen, he plays rook d8 and he just wins. So that's pretty simple. Rook takes there. Rook d8. I took takes and here I have a very small advantage both me and my opponent have basically only made just one inaccuracy here we're both playing very well queen d3 bishop b6 and oh yeah oh now that we're out of theory actually you can see the moves but uh, please don't look at the moves and bishop b6 is actually a blunder because it hangs this and see if you can calculate takes here queen g4 what is the best move after takes here and queen g4 See if you can calculate that. 
So I was afraid of queen g4, so I played h3, and that's, as you can see, a blunder. If takes here, then after queen g4, h3, because the knight's defended due to this, I was afraid of him playing queen h5 and keeping pressure here, and I thought that he would get a perpet, he might win some pawns. But after queen h5, I just have a4 and then queen d3, and the dark squares are completely under my control. And here, there's really nothing to worry about. So instead, I played h3 because I was afraid. My opponent played a5, defending his pawn. Knight c3, a mistake, but yeah, here we're, we were both actually pretty low on time. So knight g3 to here is slightly better. Knight g1 to f3 to cover, the, cover this uh, line here is better. And also to get to c4. And yeah, there's a lot of better moves. Knight c3 doesn't really have a purpose. I kind of wanted to do this because I thought it came with a tempo, but that's a little bit slow because after knight c3, bishop d4 comes with the tempo. I played knight e2 back. Here I just offered a draw. My opponent declined because I think he should actually de decline because he's on the better side of this endgame. He has lots of threats against my queen and his weaknesses are not that much. So here I play knight g3, looking to go to f5 and to e3 and to c4. This is too slow because after queen f6, he's immediately threatening queen f2 with unstoppable mate on on g1. So I play queen f3, offering a trade of queens. At this point, we're actually pretty low, but this is where we actually start making our first mistakes. Here, queen g5, just keeping on the dark squares, is actually a large advantage for him because he's going to eventually win a pawn with uh, queen c1 threatening this mate i'll have to play like knight f1 and he'll take here so he'll gain a pawn but it should still arguably a draw instead he took after takes g6 the rest of the game is uh kind of just me holding a strong defense king g2 okay king g2 is a mistake instead i should immediately try to go for the c4 square the knight getting to c4 has been a vital part of this entire game I should go knight f1 to d2 to c4. And yeah, the knight just belongs on c4 or c5. King g2, king g7, king f1, king f6. And here I did not see his idea of going here like this. So I thought, okay, I'll just stop that. Played knight e2, covering f4, king e6, king c, uh, knight c1, and... Uh, my idea was to get to d3 where I cover it more actively. Maybe I could play c4, c5, but that was just hopeful. If I get c4, c5 in, I think I'm doing extremely well. Because I might actually be winning that because I have a3, b4, and like uh, here and here. And my knight getting to d6 is very strong. So I thought that maybe I have an advantage. And I do have an advantage here. Knight d3, uh, bishop d4, king e2. King e2 just activating the king here and fxc4 fxc4 and here i actually have a large advantage because here what i'm supposed to do is i think something that most humans wouldn't do so i basically just went for the draw i thought that my position here was worse and i i was having connection problems and i haven't been able to upload much because of the connection problems but i was having connection problems as well so i was like okay i'll go king f3 and um i should just be able to hold a draw but here, if you can you find see if you can find the winning plan for white. It's not actually winning, but it's a try for a win. I'm pretty sure it's just a draw though. So the winning plan is actually to play king d2, c3, and a quick b4, and land your knight here, because your knight here guards everything. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, after king d2 is c3, the king can't really leave this because after after c3 he just loses the e5 pawn. So after here he would have to like move his bishop back here then to c7 and that would all be quite slow but instead of that i played king f3 he played h5 and yeah at, at this point it's, it's just a dead draw he can he can't really ever get past this because if he ever goes here if he ever gets to any of these squares i just go king g3 and yeah there's no e even checks my knight is really good on d3 a3 yeah this move just does nothing c5 c4 king g5 the last instructive point of this game i have to show you guys is after king f3 g5 yeah king g3 yeah i think a lot of people here if they were the higher rated player which i was very slightly higher rated player but um i knew this position was just a draw and my opponent really played very well so i was like okay i have a draw here but see if you can calculate does b4 offer any winning chances 
does it lose the game for white does it win the game for white does it is it still a draw and see if you can calculate that okay so i recommend you pause your video but b4 is actually a loss and i actually didn't even calculate this because i have seen this pattern so many times before that i pretty much knew it was a loss so the reason why this is a loss is because you have to see the bishop controls a1 if the bishop was a light squared bishop and you can play b4 okay b4 probably offers white a large winning chance but it's because b4 is no longer it because this controls this after b4 which is a blunder by the way he can go cx b4 ax b4 and maybe in your calculation you thought he had to take here but after a4 it's almost impossible to stop this you'll have to play knight c1 and then black can basically move his king to this side of the board and play like here to force you to move this up and then gobble these pawns so black is basically winning here and the engine says it's minus 1.3 but the engine is completely wrong here it's like minus 60 or something like that so i play king g3 king g6 king f3 here i offered a draw my opponent declined i he played king f6 king g3 king g6 and yeah here the position was a draw by threefold repetition i cannot do anything here the only winning chance i could try is to play knight c1 to here but if i ever play knight c1 he just wins this pawn and if i play a3 i just lose so we agree to draw in this position in case you're curious of the center pawn here's the center pawn right here and uh thank you guys for watching and make sure to like uh, like this video and subscribe and before I end the video, actually, I'm going to just discuss why I haven't been able to upload recently. It's because my Wi-Fi has been very bad and I've been lagging and I haven't actually been able to play much chess because uh, I lose like five minutes per game. And so sorry for not uploading and uh, sorry for not uh, doing things, but I couldn't really because my Wi-Fi connection is quite bad. If you notice any lag in this video, I'm sorry. But yeah, 22 centipon is really low, at least for someone at the 1950 level like me. And we were both 22 centipon. I had a, I was basically pushing the entire game. Never, these were like very small uh, advantages. But I feel like this is, was a very good game by both of us. And my opponent managed to hold me to a draw. And I think I had some winning chances if I instead of taking on c6 played knight d2 but that was a small inaccuracy and I in general am happy with how I played this game thanks for watching goodbye